Good evening. Today is October the 6th, 2020. Hope everybody's had a good day. My day's been challenging, but I'm finishing the day uh, in a much better mood than I started the day. And that's always good. I want to give a uh, remembrance and tribute tonight to a man I never met, but whose legacy affected me as he did a lot of people. A man who died 39 years ago today, the victim of an assassin's bullet, President Anwar Sadat of Egypt. An outstanding book, his autobiography, is called In Search of Identity. And he says here, I, Anwar El Sadat, a peasant born and brought up on the banks of the Nile, where man first witnessed the dawn of time, present this book to readers everywhere. This is the story of my life. It is, I believe, like every man's life, a journey in search of identity. Anwar Sadat was born on Christmas Day, 1918. His father was Egyptian, his mother was Sudanese. He began his career as an Egyptian army officer, early became involved in the struggle to liberate Egypt from British rule. He suffered greatly for the cause, spending time in prison, part of which was in solitary confinement. His prison experiences firmly convinced him that great suffering builds up a human being and puts him within reach of self-knowledge. After the withdrawal of the British and the exile of King Farouk, Sadat held a number of offices in the Egyptian government. Becoming vice president in 1960, he assumed the country's highest office following the death of President Gamal Abdel Nasser in 1970. After launching the October War, that was October the 6th, 1973, eight years before his assassination, the war against Israel and making some limited gains, Sadat concluded that the human and material cost of war benefited no one. He eventually recognized a tremendous psychological barrier separated the two sides and wrote, if I was capable of discharging my duty and sparing the next generations the suffering we had gone through, but shirked that duty, I would be sinning both against myself and against my God, who would call me to account to everything I did. His journey to Jerusalem on November 20, 1977, was the being of a chain of events that climaxed with the historic peace treaty between Israel and Egypt. The signing of the peace treaty uh, by Sadat and Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin took place in Washington, D.C. on March 26, 1979 and was facilitated by U.S. President Jimmy Carter. The main features were the mutual recognition of each country by the other, the cessation of the state of war that had existed since 1948, the complete withdrawal by Israel from the rest of the Sinai Peninsula, captured in 1967. The agreement also provided for the free passage of Israeli ships through the Suez Canal and recognition of the Strait of Tehran and the Gulf of Aqaba as international waterways. The peace treaty, along with Sadat's recognition of the demands of Islamic fundamentalists in Egypt, set off an explosion of hostility among hardliners in various countries. I still recall the peaceful spirit which Sadat, a great believer in divine destiny, exhibited as he puffed his pipe and assured television uh, commentator Barbara Walters that no one 
could take away one hour from his life, unless God so decreed. When asked how he wanted to be remembered, he replied, For my efforts to bring peace, as one who lived for peace and would die for peace. With this confidence, he approached October 6, 1981, his date with destiny. I remember that day like it was yesterday. At the time, I was living in Kaufman, Texas, where I was serving as pastor of Macedonia AME Church. I was employed as a social worker at Terrell State Hospital. Terrell is 12 miles from Kaufman. And before I got up that morning, I heard on the news that at a military parade in Cairo, so, uh, there had been a shooting. And it was believed that Sadat had been hit. As I drove to work, I heard on the radio that it was confirmed that he had been hit and that he was undergoing surgery. I immediately began to pray for him. When I arrived at the hospital, I had a treatment team meeting that day and our unit director, Dr. B.D. Beal, an outstanding psychiatrist, had stepped out of our meeting um, to get a cup of coffee. When he came back, he reported that Sadat had died. And many of us at the meeting, including a friend, a chaplain intern from India, uh, reflected on how great a man he was. Um, also remember that evening, well, that, uh, that during the day, that day, that day uh, my wife Deborah called me at the hospital, hearing about the news, wanting to know how I was taking it, noting that I was a great admirer of Sadat. That evening I was thinking that our the lodge to which I belonged, Beehive Lodge number 484, the Prince Hall Masons in Kaufman, was holding a meeting and I had it mixed up. Uh, it's the sec it was second and fourth Tuesday, not first Tuesday. So I was wrong. And I watched a um, the news reports on TV and the very good report Ted Koppel did on Nightline. In fact, I put it on Facebook for anybody who wants to watch it. Uh, I watched it on October 6, 1981. I watched it again on October 6 of 2020. And um, at the time, Ronald Reagan, who had defeated Jimmy Carter in November of 1980, was president. He did not attend the funeral for security reasons. He described the assassination of Sadat as an act of infamy. And indeed it was. Um, he was represented at the funeral by Secretary of State Alexander Haig and three former presidents, Jimmy Carter, Gerald Ford, and Richard Nixon, all who had developed a very good relationship with Sadat, attended the funeral in Cairo. I have one uh, picture that of Sadat and Ford. I call this pipe diplomacy. Uh, both Anwar Sadat and Gerald Ford were pipe smokers, as I was at the time. 
and uh, that made a very good picture. There's no doubt that the good relations that Ford cultivated with Sadat helped pave the way for the very good work that Jimmy Carter did. In fact, on March the 26, uh, 1979, I remember when they signed the peace treaty and both men appeared before a joint session of Congress along with, uh, with President Carter and um, in President Carter's speech uh, he said he quoted from the Bible say, saying that you should seek the ways of peace and not turn again to the ways of folly as a Christian I want to say to my two good friends the words of Jesus, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be the children of God. And as I watched that on TV, Deborah observed my mannerism. I was so happy to see that happen. She said I looked like a little boy on Christmas morning who had just got a, a gift he really wanted. Uh, Prime Minister Begin. Uh, before that happened, predicted the day it would be uh, the bringing together of a Christian president, a Muslim leader, and a Jewish prime minister. Truly a great event in the annals of mankind. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts. It truly was. And while there's been many, many problems since then, to this day, Egypt and Israel continue to exchange ambassadors rather than bullets, and that is wonderful. Now, you know, a lot of the other Arab leaders didn't agree with what, uh, what Sadat had done. Uh, on that segment of Nightline, they interviewed President Carter, who talked about you know, Sadat had, while he was in the United States, uh, after leaving Washington, he came to Plains, Georgia to visit with him, and he had warned him against going to war with other countries, including Libya, and uh, Carter described the then dictator of Libya, Muammar Gaddafi, as an animal with no moral sense whatsoever, and from what I know about Gaddafi, that pretty much uh, summed the matter up. It was during the administration of President Barack Obama that Gaddafi was assassinated and that uh, possible U.S. involvement in that assassination caused Minister Louis Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam to refer to President Obama as a murderer. Farrakhan and Gaddafi were good friends. In fact, the Libyan government had given a $2 million loan to the Nation of Islam. And the Muslims in Chicago was, were complaining that a Jewish-owned bank there wouldn't allow them to deposit that $2 million. Uh, well, both Gaddafi and Farrakhan were noted for their anti-Jewish views. And... Sadat is gone, but not forgotten. In 1983, the movie Sadat appeared with a Capti Academy Award-winning actor Lou Gossett Jr. in the title role. That's an outstanding movie. If you hadn't seen it, it's available on YouTube. I highly recommend it. And Prince, Prince Hall Shriners that year in Rockville, Maryland, organized On War Temple No. 219 in honor of the last Nubian black leader of Egypt. Strangely, some race-conscious Egyptians objected to the movie of a black man playing Sadat. But if you've seen a picture of Sadat, he was, uh, he could go into the African-American community and blend in perfectly. Uh, 
even before he became so well known. I had seen his picture and he really resembled a black man. And the, his mother was Sudanese. Now, uh, in 1987, when I was working on my PhD at Baylor, I had a, the pleasure of meeting his wife, Jihan Sadat, when she spoke in, at the Grand Lodge of Texas. A woman of Egypt, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but to Bob with best wishes, Jihan Sadat. That was on November 16, 1987. I took a van load of students from Paul Quinn College, which was then in Waco, to that presentation. They read extra credit reports, but um, Mrs. Sadat gave a very good speech that night. Uh, she talked about the opposition that her husband faced from the fundamentalists of Egypt. And that's very true. I mean, uh, the Dr. Dwight Baker, one of my teachers at Baylor, who spent uh, 27 years in Israel and nine years in India as a Southern Baptist missionary, reported uh, that while the recognition of Israel was a factor, it was not the only factor that contributed to Sadat's assassination. In the eyes of the Islamic fundamentalist, he was an apostate, and an apostate deserves nothing but death. And Jian Sadat, when she spoke, said that fundamentalists are very narrow-minded people. She drew a round of applause because at the time, Baylor was facing a lot of problems with the fundamentalists within the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, they later changed the governance where uh, they don't have as much control as they used to, from what I understand. But she got a round of applause, and many of us could see parallels between Southern Baptist fundamentalists and uh, Islamic fundamentalists. Well, it was certainly my pleasure to meet and hear uh, Jihan Sadat speak. It was in 1997 the Anwar Sadat Chair for Peace and Development was established at the University of Maryland in College Park. In 2001, the movie Ayam El Sadat was released in Egyptian cinemas with Ahmed Zaki in the title role. In 2006, Todd P. Zimmerman adjunct instructor at history at three Pennsylvania colleges, established a website for a proposed uh, Sadat World Peace Center. During the summer of 1980, he had written a personal letter to Sadat and to his surprise, received a personal reply from the Egyptian president inviting him to come to Egypt as his guest. He was there from April 20th to May 5th, 1981. An international crisis stemming from Syria's installation of missiles in Lebanon prevented the scheduled meeting, and the October 6th assassination prevented a later meeting. On several occasions, he met and spoke with Jihan Sadat, and uh, while Anwar did not achieve the comprehensive Arab-Israeli uh, peace he sought, he did help to reduce the risk of war and demonstrate that strong statesmanship and leadership, as well as confidence and wisdom, can make a difference. In 1979, the Arab League expelled Egypt from membership and moved its headquarters uh, from Cairo to Tunis. However, in 1989, the League reinstated Egypt and returned its headquarters to Cairo. Despite intense turmoil in the Middle East, and within Egypt itself, the Israeli peace treaty, as I said, is held firm, protecting the citizens of both nations from the devastation of war. It remains an indispensable foundation for regional peace. And thus, Sadat's legacy endures. And uh, it, uh, many younger people today born since 81, um, 
know little about this, but it's important to educate people about various things and various individuals who've come before us and who contributed a lot to the cause of peace and justice. And certainly Anwar Sadat was one of these. A uh, man remembered on the 39th anniversary of his assassination. Rest in peace, great man.